Hey everyone, Aja Lee here from Pandemonium. I have an unboxing that I'm going to do today, but I'm also going to do a flashback of when I was in Colorado and I installed my AC that I run off of solar power. This that I've got today is a power source that I can use to run that AC. I'm going to test it on that AC, but let's go ahead and get this open. Crazy girl knife. <laughs> So I hope everybody is doing well today. I know I am. It's beautiful and sunny. Okay, let's see what's all in this box. Oh, it's a box in a box. All right, I got a power station here. It is the P63 by Rock Pals. And it is 500 watts. And it is... 520 watt hours. So, I'm interested in seeing if this will run the AC. I have a smaller power battery that I use. It doesn't run it for long, but it will run it for a couple hours. So, I want to see how this one actually does. And they were supposed to send a panel with it. I don't know if they did or not. But let's go ahead and take this out. Nice black case. So it only has one 110 outlet. And then there's the input there, which is not the normal input. So I hope they sent cables. Oh, they do have another input there. That's the regular one that I have with most of my solar. I do actually already have a solar panel that I did an awning of. And if I can find that video, I'll link it up at the top. But, yeah, I'll plug it into that to charge it. Hopefully, that's the same connector. And this one seems like it has a lot more DC. This one, it has a DC port here and some connectors here. I'll check the wires that they sent. And also, USB. Oh, actually, I'm wrong. Sorry, there's two AC plugs on two opposite sides. That's pretty cool. Because the one that I have now, they're together and sometimes it's kind of awkward to plug things in, especially if it's a bigger plug, like an AC. Um, I can't use all of the um, powers because they're right next to each other, so it kind of blocks me from using the other outlet, which this one is separate and much better. I like the design and the look of this one. So the power button is right here. Let's go ahead and press and see if it is charged. Hmm. I might actually have to plug this one in and charge it. So let's see, it has a handle right up top here. The vents for cooling on each side. I'm sure that's for the inverter when it's on. All right, let's see what else we have going on here. There's another box inside of a box inside of a box. Okay. So they actually have the DC charger, which is cool. So I can just plug it into a 12 volt outlet and charge this that way, which I'll probably do. Or I might actually hook it up to my inverter because usually it goes a lot faster that way. Okay, so yeah, it's just a regular outlet. I don't think that connector is the same as my... This connector is not the same as my other one. It's a much bigger... I think it's like a 3.5 millimeter. Or maybe it's a 5.5. Yeah, this might be the 3.5. So this is smaller. So I don't think this will plug into my solar panel. They were supposed to send me a solar panel to go with this unit. But I did not receive that. So, hmm. I guess the only way I'll be charging this is through DC which is kind of inconvenient. So that means I have to pull it off my batteries, which are charging from my solar to charge this, or either just plug it into my inverter. So yeah, that's definitely not a convenient thing at all. So I'll contact the company and ask them why they didn't send me the solar panel, which they said they were going to. Rock Pals, this is a really nice design on this. I do like it, but I need to go ahead and charge it. I have the inverter on and this plugged into the inverter. Now let's plug it into the system here. Oh, 
Huh, it's saying that it does have a charge. Wonder why it wasn't coming on. Let me check that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Well, that's weird. Okay. Maybe double tap? Hmm? I'll have to read the instructions and see how it comes on. Oh, I see. Okay, there's a different port for uh, charging on solar. You don't use the one port that you use for the DC and the 110. Okay, so this is the port that you want to use with solar for charging. This is an Anderson port, so you need an Anderson connector, which I do have, so I would be able to charge this off of solar. That's nice. It's charging now, it just has one more bar to go. I'm gonna go over some of the specs while we are waiting for this to charge. The capacity on it is 520 watt hours, and that is 11.1 volts. And the weight on it, they have it in kilograms, which is 6.5, I'm not sure, that's probably like four pounds. Um, high quality lithium ion batteries, and also, the input adapter is DC 15 volt 6 amp. So that is the highest that it will take is 6 amp, which you can use 100 watt or 120 watts, I believe, is a equivalent or will do for that. Uh, solar panel, because uh, I think, what is it? 100 watt solar panel at maximum can produce 5.62 amps, I believe. So. Yes, 100 to 120 watt panel would charge this one. You don't want to do anything over that because you could probably fry the circuits. And let's see, it has one USB 5 volt, 9 volt at 2 amps, uh, one Type C, which I showed you, 5 volt, 9 volt at 2 amps, and two USBs at 5 volts at 3.1 amps. So those are the faster charging ones, and it has two of those. Three total on the uh, regular USBs and one USB C. Hmm, power pack, fast charging, 3.0 output technology. Yes, that's what I just said. And it shows how to charge it on AC, how to charge it on your DC. And it says DC 13 to 22 volts, which is a, a 12 volt panel, and maximum 6 amps, like we said. All right, I still do not see, it doesn't say on how to turn it on, but the DC output, there's a one cigarette lighter and four... 521 DC output, so you have to have an adapter for that, and I didn't see any cables. Um, and they are 12.6 12, 12 volts at 10 amps, 12 amps maximum. And there's AC continuous power, there's two of those. LED display, and the operation temperature is negative 10 Celsius. Is normally lithiums, well they can, they can discharge, but they do not like to be charged when it's below freezing. So you do, you do not, but I'm sure it has some kind of security and protection system in there, like a BMS, obviously it would have to have that. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna look at this more extensively and see how actually to turn it on. It's weird, I don't know if I'm supposed to press it like five times, two times, or just press and hold. I tried to press and hold and it didn't seem to work for me, so. Okay, I'll figure that part out. So weird that this does not tell you how to turn on the unit in the instruction manual. Usually it's very simple, but I mean, different products have different ways of cutting on. Sometimes you press and hold, sometimes you have to press it multiple times. But this one I found out, you just press it once. That's probably why they didn't tell you. And then it's on. And as far as the other ones, you just press it as well. If you want the DC on. There's the AC output, and these are the USBs here. So they each have a button. And I'm glad that there is something saying that they're on. There's no light, like my other one has a light that lets you know it's on. But this actually just tells you on the display what is on. Yep, USB-C and those outlets. Nice. So this DC here is for this DC output. 
Okay, I'm gonna finish charging because as you can see, it still needs to charge. Most of my battery banks that I've gotten over the years have had this DC plug. And I do appreciate this because when I'm driving, if I need to charge something, I can just plug it into one of my cigarette lighters. And while I'm driving, I can use that free power. Well, it's not free. I have to pay for the gas. But I'll be going to my next location and using that gas anyway. So, yes, basically, I might as well use the extra power to charge things. And it's always nice to have the DC plugs for it. Okay, it is done charging and full. They say if you live in freezing temperatures, which I had stated earlier that they do not like to charge, lithium do not like to charge when it is in freezing temperatures or it dips down below freezing. So they suggest to insulate it and the box produces, if you have it on, the battery will produce heat. So all you have to do is insulate it and it should be good in freezing temperatures. It never in my rig gets below freezing because I keep my thermostat at 50. So anytime it dips down below 50, the heater cuts on. So I wouldn't have an issue with that and wouldn't have to insulate it. But if you're keeping it outdoors, they do suggest you probably want to insulate the box. One thing I do appreciate about the unit, it is very lightweight. It's easy to carry. I'm going to go ahead and do a flashback of when I was in Colorado and I installed the Medea AC. And then we'll get back to it and see how this runs it. Today is partly cloudy. The sun comes and goes, but when the sun's here, it feels lovely. Got my sweater on because it is still a bit chilly. Today is going to be project day. I have a few things to get done. I also have to clean the rig. I am going to install this AC today. I went ahead and unboxed it so that way I could see all the parts. And I do need to get this installed because I've been sleeping with it. It's in my bed, taking up half my bed. And also so I can fix my bed. I feel weird. I usually every morning I fix my bed just to get my day started. And I haven't been able to do that. I'm gonna drink my lemon water and then I'm gonna get my project started today. What project are you working on? An edible chew toy? Seems like you've already finished that. <laughs> she had her breakfast and I gave her one of her edible chew toys. It's pretty quiet at camp. Jeff and Bruce went to Durango to get some errands done. So, not much going on. Like I said, it's partly cloudy, so it's a perfect day to get some projects done. What you doing, lady? Hike. Huh? Just went on a long hike. Oh, cool. How was it? Nice. Okay, let's check out this mess here. I pulled everything out except the actual AC. It does come with a bracket. This specific AC is meant to go in a window that has a sliding window. And the window can actually slide all the way through it because it's a U-shaped. See how there's that space right there? So I'm actually going to put wood in there to hold it in. But it does also come with this bracket. I'm not sure if it's going to work exactly. I might have to modify it a little bit. But yeah, this is the bracket that holds the unit into place. It's actually very heavy duty and well built. Because, I mean, this wasn't a cheap AC unit. It was about 350 bucks on Amazon. Okay. So there's the main holding bracket. There's two other brackets right here. There's... Oh, these are the foam pads for if you do have it in the window, you slip those in and the window actually closes on this and then it closes inside the AC unit. This is a pretty well built bracket. So there's a cotter pin right there and I have to put this where it needs to be and it has this leg that folds down. But then these rubber mats here, I guess to protect it. So this can go against the RV. I like this design. So the reason why this system's gonna work for me is because I have this window that opens up like this. This is where I'm gonna install the AC unit. Now normally, like I said, it's supposed to be a window that comes down, but I'm just gonna use this as a rain cover for the AC unit. Then I'm gonna build that out there. Seems like the only thing that I'm gonna have to rework this actually fits into a channel. If you see right here, there's a channel and it fits nicely into there. But this is the only problem here that prevents it from sliding all the way into the channel. So I'm gonna have to remove that. I'm just taking a quick glance at the tools and hardware list and also the installation manual. 
I have watched a video on installation of this product, but it was for a house, not an RV. Like I said, I'm going to have to do some things different, but it seems pretty plain and simple. So as you can see, I am not doing my projects. <laughs> the gang decided to go into town to grab some lunch, so I decided to go with them. And then I'll get started on that after we grab some food. I was hungry anyways. I'd done my lemon water, but I haven't had anything else to eat. Right, Momo? Well, we're back at camp. Oh no. I feel like I got carb overload. I think I'm gonna have to go snuggle with the AC one more time, even though it's a bed hog. I think I'll take a 30 minute nap before I get started. It came with two more extension bars. I just had to figure out which one will work the best, the long or the short one. The only thing that was difficult about putting these in was the screws that are here. They come down, so you have to take these out, put the brackets in, and then you have to slide the little stopper in, and it clicks in. Yeah, you have to put it in from the back side, because that prevents it from going any further. But other than that, not too bad. I'm just gonna set it in and adjust it. One more step. <laughs> Ooh. Love this. Let me try two first. I think that's gonna be it. Now I just have to pre-drill this and this hole. And then there's also screws here and on the other side. I've got the angle grinder out. I've decided that I'm just gonna notch into this instead. Instead of cutting that flange or whatever that comes out. That way it'll give it more stability and it can set down into here. Here I go, destroying my rig. That didn't take long. Wow, that was quick. Yep. Make sure those wires are out of the way. Wait, let's go this way first, okay. Oh, see, perfect. It fits right down into that groove. Nice. I might have to put blocks there, wood blocks. Yeah, under cause, the, Yeah, because those arms aren't long down. enough. Yeah. I think it's um, expecting a thicker exterior wall. Yeah. Awesome. You might have to push that over. This is the last screw. I, t I think that's too much. Over there. Okay. That's much better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just put those there to hold it. That yeah, but we're gonna need something there for mm. a leveler too, because yeah. it's gonna have to have some support. Yeah. Well, yeah, it really doesn't need two either. It's a little high. Yeah, it is a little high. Okay. I guess the full extension will be the best. I'll put this on the inside so people can't see them. There we go. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Yeah. It gives good support. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do for now. I'm probably going to end up painting this piece later. So I did find a scrap piece of wood. And I'm going to drill holes into this. So this will actually be connected to this. But I don't have to worry about drilling it into this. I'm going to put double-sided tape on the back of this. Just to keep it in place. So it doesn't bounce around. It was a scrap piece of wood that I use when I'm putting my hitch down for the trailer, but I had several extra pieces. So now it's gonna be repurposed for this. Like I said in the beginning, I might have to alter a few things. I didn't know that it would require a thicker wall. Obviously it goes into a house, so this will work. Okay, I have the double-sided tape on. I use a 30 pound tape, the same to hold these on, and they haven't gone anywhere. Plus it'll help as a cushion, so the wood won't be rubbing up against the paint job. This should help with the weight of the air conditioning. It definitely shouldn't go anywhere. Angled right. That looks good. That'll give it the support. Okay. 
I just pre-drilled the holes. Now I'm going to put the screws in. Feels good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, last step cut this box open and get the AC onto the bracket. Ugh. Okay, I was able to get it out of the box. That was a chore. Time to get it in. How does it look out there? Well, you gotta. A while to go here. I mean, why a is this? While. Well, I mean, there's another eight inches of bracket. <laughs> I know, but I wonder if it has to go to the very back. Cause see, this is the window area. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's supposed to. No. No. Yeah, no. No. That means it would go all the way out the window. That makes no sense. Yeah. So it's got to come forward. Cause. All right. Well, maybe this thing moves. Huh? Maybe this thing moves. Oh, oh, the brackets, right? Okay. Let me come out there real quick yeah. and see. I need to go ahead and put those wood pieces in so I see how uh, it's going to be. I bought this 2x6 from Home Depot and it was 70% off because there was something wrong with it. But it works for my purpose and I didn't have to pay as much. This is a, this was actually a 16 foot board but I had them cut it four times into a, a four foot section. Here's the setup so far. We've got the bracket and then here are the boards that I was talking about. And they're four foot and this gives it support as well so i'm just going to do slats and slats one more is going to go there and then the only thing i have to do is probably get some foam and insulate that out so you know no creatures or collies or um, wind comes through i got my trusty tool gonna cut these boards to fit unfortunately this doesn't reach all the way through so i'm gonna have to cut one side and then flip it and cut the other side Change battery. All right, take two. Ta-da. I pre-drilled the holes. Now I just gotta put the screws in. Well, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, the boards are in. Like I said, this unit's meant for a window to go through it, but I'm using it as extra support. So those are two by sixes. So this AC is not gonna fall out at all. Not to mention it's got this holding it on as well. The only problem that I'm running into is it, um, there's a space here and I want to actually see it will wiggle it won't fall out but it'll wiggle so i need to put something here and then i'm going to put some double-sided tape here and there and then cram something in here so it doesn't move at all and then obviously i can't forget about this that would hello <laughs> so i'm either gonna cut a board here it looks like a two by four would work well here I might cut a 2x4, I don't have one on me, so I'll have to go to the hardware store. But for now, I'm just gonna um, cut some foam and put it there, just to block the air from coming in. When I was looking for where metal touched, I realized that this part was leaning down too much, and this needed to be supported up a little bit more. See, it's supposed to connect like that. So we needed to add just a little more wood. So that's what I did. I removed the old board, and I'm using one of the new pieces, because that one was kind of rotted. And then I added this little piece here. This has been readjusted. Put two shims in there just to get it nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Then we did the foam here just to give it support from falling forward. And that's it. It is in good. This sucker's not going anywhere. Nowhere! <laughs> Other than the foam that I put in these spots, I'm placing some foam here. The air conditioner came with some sticky foam, more sticky on one side. So I'm gonna place that on the air conditioner. That way the metal isn't rubbing on the glass. And then I'm gonna fasten this down so it doesn't move. 
and that foam should protect it. So right now I've got the bungee holding the window down and it's pretty secure. This is removable. I can remove this. But I want the window there so the rain runs off and doesn't puddle on top of the air conditioning unit. So it's just acting like a little awning. I did put the foam insulation in here where the cracks were. So that'll help anything from getting in. Well, this is as good as it's going to get for now. All I have to do is paint the boards. And then it'll be completely done. I also have to fill in a little bit with some caulking. There's a little gap there. But all in all, I really like it. That way I can run my AC off of my solar. Now that it is charged, I have the battery bank back here. Here is the cable for my AC unit. Now, when I take a nap, that AC unit is awesome. And for a small battery bank like this, this will work because usually I only take a nap for 30 minutes to an hour and it should have plenty of power for that. I still have the plastic on my <laughs> AC unit cable. I need to take that off real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it in. That's kind of weird. Okay, upside down there, but I guess that's good. But anyways, let's go ahead and cut it on and turn on the AC. There we go. It should cut on, and it did. So we're going to cut the power on here. I have it set at 74. Let's drop that down to 72. There goes the fan, and there goes the compressor. See how quiet it is? There's a button right here called swing and that controls this door and you can control where you want it. Just press. There's the mode button, eco button, timer. If I want to set on a timer so it doesn't run all night if I want to cool down a little bit. And there is connect. This is for Bluetooth. You can connect it to your phone and control it through your phone. Okay, with this one, it doesn't actually tell me how much power I'm using, which is unfortunate, but as soon as it's cut on, I don't know if I had it charged all the way, it's dropped down two bars. I have another 500 watt and it will run it for a couple hours. So I'm inter interested to see, it's a warm day today, so I'm gonna shut the curtain and let this run for a minute and see how cool it gets and what it drops down to. This might because the compressor cut on, so it initially used a lot of power uh, for that compressor. It's supposed to be, an efficient one because it is an inverted AC. So it's supposed to be one of the most efficient out there. It is built by a company that actually makes split units, mini splits. And they started doing window units, it's the Medea. So yeah, I'm gonna let this run. I'm gonna shut the curtain and see how it cools down. Today is, like I said, a warmer day. So since this unit doesn't show me the draw of the AC unit, I did test it on another unit. So I'm going to go ahead and flash back to that and we can see all the specs. I went ahead and plugged in this meter. Jeff had a meter and this one actually has a built-in timer so I know how long it's been running and I'm going to see how much it uses. The reason we plugged this in so we could see how many amps it was using 110. So it says 4.346 amps, but that's on 110, which is actually the, off the 12 volt battery, it's using 33.1 amps. Solar AC. Now, obviously, if I'm going to run it for longer than a couple hours, I do have an extension cord and I will just plug it straight into my coach batteries, which can run it. I've actually done it before. It can run it all night long. And my coach batteries, if they start at like 13.2, they're down to 13 volts. So it only uses 0.2 volts, which is awesome. Yeah, by the time I get up, it just depends on how hot it is outside. But I have tested it before and my other batteries, my coach batteries, which I have seven lithium batteries, so it barely touches it, which is nice when it's hot and I don't want to run my generator. Okay, it is 412 now, so it's been running for almost 30 minutes and it got really quiet back there. So, well, it feels nice and cool back here, but, and the power is the same, but since it's on eco mode, it did cut off, so I'm gonna cut off eco mode and cut it down to, 69. There, it cut back on. 
I'll keep the eco mode off so that way the fan will keep on blowing even though the temperature gets to 69. But so far it's doing well. I mean, 30 minutes, or about 30 minutes, and it's still at the same. Like I said, I don't know if I charged it fully. It just looked like it was charged, but it dropped two bars automatically. But it's been holding at three bars. So maybe I just need to charge it again. But I think it's doing well so far. I'm going to leave it on for another 15 minutes, and hopefully the compressor stays on and everything. Let me actually... And cut that down to 68. There we go. Alright. We'll see you in a few. Ta-da! <laughs> so it's been 15 minutes. Oh god, it feels wonderful. What are you doing back here, Lulu? <laughs> that is another good reason besides taking naps. Is if I have to go into a store or go shopping and cannot take Mumu or wherever I go. Um, if I'm going to explore or whatever and she cannot go with me. I can always cut on this AC unit. Keep her cool. Here's a little chew toy, a little treat for her to eat on while she waits on me to do whatever I'm doing. And like I said, if I'm going to run it for more than a couple hours, if I'm just running into a store, then I can definitely use this. But if I'm going to run it more than a couple hours, then I'll plug it into my main batteries. But so far, look, it hasn't moved. It's on 68. The compressor's on. It feels wonderful back here. Nice and cool. You're just chillaxing, aren't you? And the power gauge has not moved. It's still at three bars. So this is definitely going to work out for me. I really do like the design of this and how the power units are separate. Let me go ahead and cut the light on so you can see better. There we go. And there's Mumu. You can see her better. You go ahead and eat your treat. She's like, no, I like to do it in private. <laughs> I know. Anyways. So yeah, this is definitely going to work if I have something quick to do and need to give Mumu AC. Or if I want to come and take a nap, I can definitely use this. I do have another power bank in there as well that I, I used to use for this, but I'm going to start using this. I just have to get it plugged into a solar panel. I have to get the adapter for it. What do you think, Mumu? You ready to chill out? i got to fix that light. That blinky light's getting on my nerves. Right there, right there, right there. Anyways, all right, I'm going to leave you to your treat. Hold on. Cut the light off. So while Mumu is chilling back there in the AC, I'll just let her chill. I actually have to go to run some errands. I have to go do laundry and go to get some supplies. But my thoughts on the product is it's built very nicely. I like the display. It's nice and easy to read. And I like how the ports are separate from each other. So that way you can plug in multiple things and they don't get in the way of each other. It's really going to work out for me. And the only thing that I do not particularly like is that they didn't send me the solar panel, which we had agreed on when I decided to do the review on this specific unit. But... I did contact the company and hopefully they'll send that out to me and if they do then I will do another video on how that solar panel charges it. I do have an extra solar panel in the back that is 120 that I might be able to use for it if they decide that they aren't going to send me a solar panel. So I have all that worked out. Hopefully they do send it to me and um, it does have the proper connectors for it. And that'll be great because then I won't have to get the proper connectors because right now I don't have it's it's meant for the other battery bank and it has a different connector so I wouldn't be able to use that right now I'd have to actually buy the connectors for it so I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me today I hope you enjoyed this review and if you like this product there is a link in the description with a discount code so go check that out go get you one if you think this will work out for you it is like I said a 500 watt battery unit so if you need something bigger they also I believe do carry something bigger that you can buy but I found out I do have a bigger unit I have a 22 I think watt hour and it's heavy and bulky it's awesome but it takes so long to charge with these smaller units they charge quicker 
And if you don't use a lot of power, I use a lot of power. That's why I have so many lithiums. But if you don't use a lot of power or for certain things, you know, like to charge my laptop at night if I don't want to do it off my main batteries, it's going to work perfect. Or to run my TV, I do have a TV that I use and watch at night. I, I have one in the bedroom that I could use that for as well. So it's going to have a lot of functions. And like I said, it's a smaller unit, so you can charge it much quicker. It, it doesn't take as long and you don't need as much wattage to charge it. With the 2200 watt hour one, I need a lot of solar. I need I used two huge panels to charge that one, but I am getting another panel in um, soon, and I'm going to be doing a review on that one, so keep an eye out for that one if y'all are looking for a solar panel. I'm going to install it as well as an awning like I did from my bedroom, that smaller panel that I used to charge these smaller banks with. But once again, thank you for watching the review, and we will see you later. Love you guys out there. Bye for now. Let me to pieces, yeah I need it Won't you bend them all?